Hi there, I'm Patsy Thompson and I'd love to show you our new line of turret rulers. There are currently three turret rulers and when you first see them, it's not totally clear what they're used for. See what I mean? Our line of turret rulers was inspired by the beautiful architectural lines that are seen in various turret towers, Turkish mosques, and Russian onion towers. These same wonderful curves and angles can be used to create interesting swag designs on quilts, and once you've created the framework with a turret ruler, you can fill that framework with background fill designs, feathers, featherettes, or with any combination of designs you can dream up. If your ruler arrives with the protective paper backing still attached, remove that backing and your ruler will be fully exposed. Notice that each of our turret rulers comes in both the traditional quarter inch thick long arm thickness as well as the thinner three millimeter thickness for use with the low or medium shank westerly ruler feet. Once you've removed the paper backing from the ruler, you'll see that there are etched markings that will allow you to create a variety of channels once the first turret swag framework has been stitched. As you use these rulers, You'll find yourself using both sides of the ruler and it can be quite easy to mix up which end of the ruler is the base and which is the tip so these rulers are marked to keep you oriented. There are also a series of lines at the base of each ruler and these are a way to ensure that you begin and end each swag at the same place on the ruler. Let's stitch one out so you'll see what I mean. I have already marked the starting and stopping points for my turret swag and I also placed a vertical line that denotes the center of the swag. I place my needle at my starting point, and as I align my turret ruler against it, I make sure that I line up an etched line on the ruler with my starting line, so I'll be able to use that same line when I go to stitch the opposite side. This will assure a completely symmetric swag. I begin stitching along the edge of the ruler and I can pause to adjust my hands each time I reach a new zone on the ruler if I need to reposition my hands. Now once my needle reaches my mark for the midway point of the swag, I stop stitching with my needle down and then I flip my ruler over to get ready to stitch the opposite side of that first swag you're probably noticing that I've pivoted my piece and that's because my ruler foot has a slanted side that I don't use for ruler work since it's too easy to mess up my stitched line if I place a ruler on that side. I align the turret ruler so that the same etched line on the ruler as I used before will be my end point and then I just stitch the opposite side the same way I stitched the first. Once the first swag has been stitched, I can go on to stitch the next swag or I can add some channels in the first swag. In this case, I'm adding a series of one quarter inch wide channels. This is very easy to do, just like I would do it with any other type of quilting ruler. By lining my ruler edge up against my stitch line, I will create a channel that is one quarter inch from that earlier stitch line. These turret rulers all have markings so you can create a variety of channel widths and that's also easy to do just by aligning the marked line on the ruler with the stitched line. When I get to the midway point of this swag, I again flip my ruler over and I just stitch out the opposite side and I can add as many channels as I want. One thing I really like about these turret rulers is they allow me to create a wide variety of turret designs in different sizes and shapes depending on how wide my border is, how long it is, and where on the ruler I start my design. Let me stitch another one out and you'll see exactly what I mean. Because these turret rulers have discrete sections or zones, I can leave off a zone or two to create a different design. For this next swag, I'm going to skip the bottommost section, so I'm placing the ruler's starting point at the beginning of zone 2, or the beginning of the second hump. 
It's hard for you to see, but this means that the ruler is about one quarter inch below that second hump's beginning since the ruler foot adds a quarter inch. I stitch along the edge of the ruler just like before, and when I reach the midpoint of the swag, I flip the ruler over to get ready to stitch the other side. Notice that I'm placing the end of the ruler one quarter inch below that seam edge because my goal is to stitch the full two upper sections out just as I did on the first side. This is important to remember because it's so easy to forget to account for that quarter inch when you're playing around with only focal sections of these rulers. I then stitch out the opposite side and my first swag is done. I can add channels or not, and then I can fill that swag with whatever I like. Remember that in the last demo, I left out the bottommost section of the swag, so when I did the upper zone of the swags, I left off the bottom two sections of the turret swag. This left me with smaller swags, but they still have a lot of character and some interesting curves, don't they? What I've just demoed used only the Turrets 1 ruler. Now the Turrets 2 and Turrets 3 rulers are a little bit different in that each of them has a flat section near the base of the ruler. This flat section will not only create a very different design, but it will allow you to use a different type of alignment technique that may be much easier for you. Let me show you what I mean. Once I've determined where I want the flat zone of my ruler to fall in the border zone, I can mark a temporary soap line across the border. When I go to align my turret ruler, I can use that soap line as a long mark against which I can place my ruler. I place the corner of the base where I want to begin my swag design, and then I just align the flat section up against my soap line, and then I can begin stitching. Notice that because the ruler has discrete sections to it, it's fairly easy to stitch the short distance in one section, then stop and reposition my hand if necessary, and then go on to stitch the next section. Once I've stitched my first side, I align the ruler's base to achieve my desired end point of the swag, and then I again use that same soap line to make sure I'm aligning the ruler correctly. I can do this repeatedly as I work my way down the length of the border, or I can go ahead and add in some channels as you saw me doing earlier with the Turrets 1 ruler. You're probably wondering what is the difference between these rulers? Each of them allows you to create different varieties of swag shapes. For example, here's an example of some turret swags created with the Turrets 1 ruler and here are the same swag shapes filled in. Here's an example of one of the swag designs made with the Turrets 2 ruler, and here's a Turrets 2 swag that's been filled in. And now here's an example of one of the Turrets 3 swags, and here it is all filled in. Each ruler allows you to make a variety of swag designs in all kinds of sizes, so you have the freedom to truly customize swag designs to fit your quilt. I think of my turret rulers as kind of like a fancy arc ruler, so I've been playing with it in all the same ways that I know I can play with my arc rulers. You can also use the turret rulers to create a variety of fancy frames around important motifs on your quilt. Here's an example of a frame I created with the turret's three ruler around a feathered wreath. Now here's that final frame once I'd added plumes all around it. Pretty cool, right? So how do I know what kind of a swag design is going to fit on the space that's available on my quilt? Once I've determined the size available on my quilt, I do a quick mock-up on paper using a spacer to account for that quarter inch ruler foot. Just as when I'm working on fabric, I can experiment on paper with adding channels to see how well I like a given design. For my really large turret swag designs, I make copies of empty swag designs on scrap paper and then play around with filling them in while I'm watching TV at night. This is my version of an adult coloring book. 
I think that gives you a pretty good idea of some ways you can use our turret rulers, and I've just given you a fraction of all the ideas that you can do. If you'd like to start playing with them on your own, visit our online store at PatsyThompsonDesigns with an S dot com. If you have not started playing with rulers yet, now is the time. Now get going.